mean, let's kind of play out the scenario. Let's mm-hmm. say that uh, this cartel, for lack of a better word, NCAA cartel were broken and athletes could, student athletes could negotiate for their ability, uh, based on their ability and so on. What would happen to the wall such as it is that exists now economically between student sports and so-called professional sports? You know, that's a great question, and I'm glad, by the way, you used the word cartel. This is a fun fact. Uh, the NCAA, it's not, it's not, it's not you know, the right choice of word. It is a cartel, and I'm not saying this myself. Uh, one of the NCAA's own economic witnesses, expert witnesses in one of the court cases right now, in his own textbook that is taught in college classes, also refers to the NCAA as a cartel. So I just want to make that clear. In terms of how this would play out, uh, if we got rid of amateurism, if there was some sort of free market, I don't think the changes would be as dramatic as some people think. Uh, number one, uh, the NCA often says, well, if we have to start paying these revenue-producing athletes, uh, we're not going to be able to afford women's lacrosse and men's wrestling and the non-revenue sports. That's bogus. There's a ton of money in the system. And what happens right now is this money basically goes to bigger athletic director salaries bigger coaching salaries, which we've all seen, and it goes to building bigger and fancier facilities. There's kind of a gold-plating effect that happens because the money is limited from going to the actual talent. Uh, So what you would see is a redistribution of some of that money. I don't think a school would necessarily cut its wrestling team to pay its football players, but they might pay the football coach half of what he's making now because there wouldn't be as much money around to pay him. I don't have a problem with that. Um... I also think the idea that, you know, somehow uh, this would, again, negatively impact education, uh, you make a great point. A-, a lot of these places, when you're talking about the big-time athletes that are in the big-time sports that make the big-time money, uh, they're majoring in eligibility. In fact, all you have to do is look at the testimony in the Northwestern case. And by right. the way, Northwestern is a great academic school that, that, you know, most of these guys are graduating, but they, they, they talk about how, they have to change their majors because they can't fit into their football schedule. They talk about how, you know, they're encouraged to do that. And you look at other schools, look at what's happened in North Carolina with the academic scandals there. And you can look at a guy, uh, Shane Battier, an NBA player, played at Duke, very, very smart guy. You know, he majored in religion at Duke, not because he wanted to, but because that was the only major that fit his basketball schedule. These guys are working 50, 60, 70 hours a week at their, at their sports. And like I said, it's work. It's a job. You can call it something else, but if you look at what they're doing, you're just being semantic at that point. 